UFO reports of orange balls of light are spiking all over the world. Whoa, I'm getting a series of lights right there. It's moving. But most witnesses are filled with terror and dread. She starts screaming. She won't stay out after dark. What emotion do you associate with air? Those who see the lights. I was employed by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Report strange occurrences. The farther I drove, the closer this light got to me. And they want these terrifying encounters to stop. They're frightened. Some of these people are just scared out of their minds. Oh, whoa, there, they are. there it is. Video evidence seems to show that something is going on that we just don't understand. Wow. Whoa, whoa! But what is it? There is no explanation for it. We have no known source for what is causing it. Is this presence a warning of things to come? This orb stopped three feet from me, and I heard a voice say, don't touch it or you'll die. This is case number 92207, Dark Presence. investigated balls of light orbs last year in Indiana. Guess what? They're back. And this time, we're going to investigate a whole other aspect of the kind of a dark presence. People are reporting a frightening UFO contact that involves nightmares, headaches, terrifying premonitions, and sometimes actual confrontations with the orbs. These spherical UFOs are really nothing new. If you go back into Project Blue Book, there was all kinds of uh, reports of spherical UFOs. This has been going on for a long time, and it, it, it's a huge part of ufology to understand what these balls of light are. The spike in orb sightings is a worldwide phenomenon, from Puerto Rico to Australia. But we're seeing a pattern of reports in Missouri, Indiana, and Arizona for some reason. So we need to investigate this phenomenon and find out what's going on. These orbs aren't necessarily UFOs. Uh, there's so many conventional explanations that don't associate with any kind of communication whatsoever. There's conventional and there's unconventional. So I think that's what we need to explore. And we're gonna try to get to the bottom of what this presence means. Respected investigator Ted Phillips has been exploring the orb phenomena for two decades and focusing on a particular area in the Ozarks of Missouri that he calls Site X. People are reporting nightmares, animal mutilations, hauntings, and a deep fear of these uninvited guests. People are so frightened by these orbs, they don't want to come forward. Hi, Ted. How are you? Hi, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. But investigator Ted Phillips has gained the trust of this community, and he's sharing with us some horrible accounts that witnesses have told him. We've had uh, a great deal of new activity in the light bulb area. I wanted to bring along some photos and some video to give you a better idea of what we're talking about. The light balls uh, range in size from baseball to basketball. They all fly around, maneuver, sometimes go into a uh, sort of yo-yo pattern, up and down, and then to the right and the left. And do this for a long, long time. There it is. Wow. Whoa, whoa. I got called Ted, man. The longest duration sighting was over an hour and 30 minutes. So you're eliminating things like uh, uh, gas or earth lights because of the duration. Now recently, more of the objects have been seen on the ground. So there is a little bit of the fear factor. What are the effects on humans? Dry throat. Uh, some nausea, severe headaches, colors in their vision. We've never heard stories like this before from anyone about the interactions of orbs with human beings. 
So we're looking at a close encounter with the fifth hind here. Wow, wow that was an awesome. There it is. Ronnie, turn your camera on. Right. Have there been any fatalities or injuries uh, in relation to these sightings? We had one case, one of the very best, and a little girl's jumping on the trampoline. She sees this close, a light bulb. And she slips and twists her ankle just a bit. She starts screaming. Her mother tells me, said she won't stay out after dark, has not since it's happened. So the daughter is scared of these things. Oh, yes, she is. The story that Ted is telling us is rather hard to fathom. And how could this be happening, and yet the, the media hasn't reported any of this? I'd love to interview this woman that had this confrontation, but Ted says she's just too scared to talk. Are there any deaths that you can ascribe specifically to these objects? We had a case in which the ranch owner and his son were sitting there one afternoon, and they saw a small light bulb. Well, he had his three labs lying on the ground there by him, and the light bulb makes a low pass over the three dogs, gets their attention, and it starts moving away towards a, a small clump of trees, and the dogs follow. And suddenly, he hears uh, uh, terrible cries from the dogs, and he runs down there. The light bulb is gone, and he finds the three dogs as three sort of gooey puddles on the ground. The dogs were liquefied? Mm -hmm. This is a community with, with a problem. Where, where do you go when you're being plagued by strange balls of light that are actually making your children cry and also causing harm to plant life and livestock? I think there's an indication in the fact that they, the thing lured the dogs. That puts it into an entirely different realm. What do you think these objects are? The one thing I can tell you is these things are real, whatever they are. So many witnesses seeing the same things, and they are physical. Are we dealing with some kind of malevolent force here? Yeah, I really think, based on what happened, you have to go with uh, malicious intent. This is an incredible video and a story that Ted has shared with us. We have to analyze the video. But interesting to note that just 30 miles away, we have a first-hand account of orbs making nightly visits. And they're also linked to a dark presence. I was employed by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. One night, I noticed this light off to my left. The farther I drove, the closer this light got to me. Doug Schultz is a 31-year veteran of the Missouri Highway Patrol. While on duty, he witnessed a single orb every night for a year. So many residents in the area saw this light that it became known as the North View Light. In December of 1992, I was in Marshville going across the, the uh, exit 100 overpass. I noticed the North View Light off to my left. It was brighter, larger, and closer than I'd ever seen it before. I went west on Highway 38, and the farther I went, the closer this light appeared to get to my patrol car. It was really close, really large, so I decided I was going to stop my car and turn the engine off and see if I could hear this thing. I stood with the door open, got my binoculars out, and I got a good look at this thing. It was probably about a, no more than a quarter of a mile from me, and it was about 80 to 100 feet above the ground, hovering immediately over the county road. My patrol car was equipped with a spotlight, so I decided that I would shine the spotlight on the object uh, just to see what, it, what might happen. As soon as I shined the spotlight on it, this craft, without making any noise, took off and was out of sight in less than a second. A friend of mine lived uh, almost directly below where this light was hovering at the time. Uh, he was a cattle rancher. Uh, we found a dead 
cow uh, in the farmer's residence. Uh, this particular cow had about an 18 inch incision made in its neck. It also had uh, parts of its udder removed. We've already investigated cattle mutilations, and those witnesses have reported that orbs have been sighted in the areas where dead animals are found. All I can say is the light appeared almost nightly during this time period, and at the same time period, we were having cattle mutilations. What, what is your take on, on what happened uh, during that time? I wish I knew. Could the orb that Doug Schultz has observed for over a year be part of the orb colony that's terrorizing Site X? We need to analyze the video from Site X to see if there are clues to what it is. Jim. Bill, oh, hi. Hi, thank you for seeing right. us today. Well, I've been analyzing UFO pictures for more than 20 years, and in the last 10 years, a lot of the attention has been on orbs because that's what we see more often now than disc-shaped UFOs. Jim Delatoso of Spectrum Video has analyzed hundreds of UFO and orb videos. And what he brings to this investigation is a database created from previous investigations, a huge asset in trying to determine what these objects are and are not. It's like a, a police fingerprint database. You have a bunch of knowns. They're uh, planets, stars, airplane lights, flares. You have an unknown. You extract the data and try to get a match. If you get a match, you can say, well, these are flares. If you don't get a match, then it's absolutely unknown. Ted Phillips' video. The interesting thing to me was that it's two lights, they stay on, one's large and one's small, and then it becomes three lights. We can be sure that these lights are not an airplane. Well, airplane lights don't remain steady like that. The patterns of airplane lights are known. There's specific patterns that, that they need to be to, to come on and off. He says, absolutely, these are not airplanes, these are not helicopters. Uh, in his professional opinion, we're looking at something completely different. These lights, they're unique. We have this one light that plays back and forth between one light, two lights, one light, two light. And that lasts for some number of minutes. Jim Dilatoso is analyzing Ted Phillips' footage, and he says the video isn't matching any known objects like conventional aircraft or flares in his database. But he is intrigued by what we're showing him, which means that maybe we're onto something. Can we say that this is definitely not uh, some kind of military operation going on there? Well, I can't say whether it is or isn't a military operation, but I can say this is not flares because the lights don't modulate. They don't flicker. They don't change. If we built a graph, comes on, stays on, goes off. And what's a flare graph look like? A, a flare graph is modulating frame to frame. The red, green, and blue content are all varying in relationship to each other, and the overall brightness, the luminance, is varying. So guys, you know, we've been hearing a lot about orbs. You've got the story of the little girl. Even though she experiences no bodily harm, to this day as an adult, she will not go out at night alone on that property. What would you do if you live in a community where these balls of light come out and, and somehow threaten you, actually make you feel threatened, unsafe? W would you be able to tell people about it without them thinking you were nuts, right? I mean, who would believe you? These stories are amazing because these are the signs of intelligence behind these balls, but we have to remember these are still just stories that we're hearing. Without actually getting to the site, I just don't have enough yet. Sidex isn't the only place where UFOs have a malevolent effect on those who see them. There's another hot spot 
where witnesses are reporting seeing orbs in conjunction with a dark presence. And it's a place we've investigated before, Kokomo, Indiana. There was an orange light. What I observed that night were not any flares I've ever seen. You know, I think we have to use this information and let's bring that with us to Indiana. All right, back to Kokomo. We're meeting with Glenn Means, the Indiana State Director for MUFON, who's going to talk to us about these balls of light. Now they're proliferating, they've changed, and we want to hear what Glenn Means has to say about it. What has been going on in Indiana? I know you're investigating it, MUFON's been involved in it. Just tell us what's going on. For 30, 40 years, easy, we have had ovals appear in the sky, orange balls of light. These are not flares, gentlemen. These are not things that are affected by gravity. As a flyer for 20 years in the Air Force, I can tell you that this is nothing I've ever seen before. Glenn Means is a credible investigator with the Mutual UFO Network. He flew black ops aircraft while he was in the Air Force and was involved in top secret missions. So he's familiar with black projects as well as the capabilities of conventional aircraft. What kind of evidence of the orange balls of light have you been able to collect? We've got lots of film, we've got lots of videotape, lots of still pictures, but that's about as hard evidence as we can get. When you look at these orange balls of light, are you looking at them as if there is a tangibility to them, a substance to them, or are they manifestations of just pure energy? The ones I've seen do not manifest any type of craft. You look at them and it's just like looking at an orange sphere that's glowing internally. Uh, it's not like something that has lights on it. You can see that the light is coming from inside the sphere. Have you ever had any sign of intelligence behind them? Or are they just moving sporadically? That's one of the most fascinating aspects to ovals because indeed they do show signs that they are aware of our presence, just as we become aware of them. The feelings that some of our witnesses have been reporting would seem to back that up. Uh, sensations of peacefulness, calm, other witnesses reporting intense fear. Uh, they're frightened. Some of these people are just scared out of their minds. This is very different from what witnesses told us last year. There's a real fear this time, and it's very difficult to get them to talk about what they're experiencing. We did locate one witness who insisted that we not reveal her identity. I don't know of anybody who saw what I saw. They were pinkish red, and they pulsated. They went on one by one, just kind of blinked on, and then they shut off all at the same time. I've only told a few people about the lights I saw in the sky. Um, I don't really like to tell anybody. We're here in Kokomo, Indiana, where we're about to meet with an eyewitness. Because she works in law enforcement, she can't really disclose her identity and wishes to remain anonymous. Well, I was on shift that night. Um, I was leaving our president and approximately 9 o'clock. Um, I saw and a strobing light in the corner of my eye in the northeast sky. Didn't think it looked right, so I continued to watch it a little bit longer. And then the southeast sky was another strobing light coming towards the first one. It looked like they were going to collide, and then a bunch of pink red lights came out the whole world. Of Do you remember about how many lights were in this row? I would say probably seven or eight. It was like a half crescent, perfect. It's not like they were falling, you know, and snuffly, and they were all in unison. And did you get the impression that these were separate lights, independent of each other, or attached to a solid object? Oh, they were, they were independent. I didn't see any object. 
And then they stayed in the sky for half a second, and then they all blinked out. And they all blinked out. I just have dreams about what I saw, trying to figure out what I saw. My dreams haven't really been making any sense. All they are are the lights going on in the sky. So the lights keep coming back to you in your dreams? Just that, just that one dream. Well, when you remember your dream, what emotion do you associate with it? Probably fear. We're in Kokomo, Indiana, investigating a UFO dark presence. Witnesses to these orbs live in fear and report a terrifying psychic intimidation along with strange premonitions they can't control. Most are too afraid to speak out, but we've managed to find a few witnesses who are willing to talk. They come on as a light and will just stay there in the sky. Then they'll go off. I don't know what they are. My name's Roger Lamberson and I've seen the orbs. We're meeting with Roger Lamberson, who saw orbs on the same night as our previous witness. So we know that something has been going on over Kokomo. And I saw this, uh, these lights, which are, in fact, uh, I've seen them before. They're flares. There's a military operating zone over here. Mm -hmm. They drop flares. They come on sequence one and another, mm -hmm. and they pop off in that same sequence. Immediately after that, I saw circular lights. Looked like they were around a vehicle of some sort. How many lights were there? About 10 or 12 of them. And did you get the impression that they were different lights from a different craft or all part of one object? Just all part of one object, what I thought. And they were closer together than the flares. Mm -hmm. And they came on all at once. And they went off all at once after a couple seconds. Was there any movement to it? No. It seemed like it was kind of hovering in the sky? It's like the orbs that you see around here. They just come on, go off. What we have here is a sighting that is very brief, happened at night, and it was quite a distance away. The lights that he saw don't demonstrate the, the flight characteristics that are typically associated with an unconventional craft, and especially not these balls of light that we're hearing reports of. So Roger, uh, what do you think these orbs are? I have no clue. I've always assumed they were extraterrestrial, but then you figure, uh, you know, what are they doing here? Why do they care? Something is going on on the heartland that threatens the security of the people here and involves unwelcome visitations from these orb-shaped UFOs. Well, how sure are you that there's a genuine phenomenon over Kokomo? I'm positive that there is. I know when something can't be explained. I don't know what it is, but there is a phenomena that takes place in this area. This is uncharted territory that we're in. Glenn Means has invited the M. Ripa Paranormal Investigation Team to be part of the Sky Watch this evening. We're just gonna stand back and observe what they do. And this is an unprecedented union of traditional UFO investigators and paranormal researchers trying to solve the case. Over the years, we have come across report after report that just don't fit in that normal scientific you know, nuts and bolts craft type of genre. So that's why we have started reaching out to people like Jason and Rachel. Jason and Rachel's Midwestern researchers and investigators of paranormal activities is crossing over into UFO cases. The team has several night vision and heat seeking cameras that they use in their investigations of ghosts and other paranormal activity. And we'll see if we can get anything on tape tonight. We have three of the high resolution infrared cameras positioned out on the skyline. Uh, where Glenn and some others have told me that they have seen things in the past, things that have show up in the IR spectrum could possibly be drawn to the IR spectrum. Mm -hmm. So by throwing uh, an enormous amount of infrared light out, it's possible that we might get some kind of action or contact.
Our goal is to stay here all night and see if orbs make an appearance. M. Rippa's cameras are especially sensitive, so ideally they'll pick up anything that comes into view. Right now we're seeing little rain droplets being amplified by the infrared light. Rain droplets have a specific look that people sometimes will claim to be paranormal when it's not, in fact, it's rain. Dust has a specific look, and if it's an orb, it has a definitely defined appearance that you know is not water or dust. Have you actually captured orbs with this equipment? Yes, we have. We've caught orbs in regards to the, uh, the spirit realm. It is normally, when it, within a couple of seconds, we'll catch on the DVR system. Mm -hmm. I've been very lucky with capturing them on still photographs. What does a real orb look like? A real orb looks like a ball of electricity with a clear, transparent center. There is no explanation for it. It's a light anomaly. We have no known source for what is causing this. As we can see in the monitors right now, the rain has slowed down a little bit. We can still see the droplets coming through. Uh, we're going to let the equipment run uh, for the remainder of the evening to see if there's possibility that we will capture something. This is a prime opportunity with three cameras out there. If they're going to come out and play and they want to show themselves, they should be doing it now. It was a long, slow night, and we didn't see anything that couldn't be explained as dust, stars, or aircraft. But it was a really interesting experiment, including this paranormal team, and it's something that we may want to try again. I thought we had a really interesting time in Indiana. I mean, we heard lots of stories. Now we're going to Phoenix, and we are being inundated with hundreds of reports. People are seeing orbs all over the place. Like Kokomo, we've investigated Phoenix previously and heard nothing from witnesses about fear and nightmares. So something has changed, and I'm puzzled why these UFO reports have suddenly taken on this malevolence. I don't know if we're talking about a completely different type of orb here, or maybe the same orbs could be both demons and angels, you know, uh, a, a threat and benevolent. Arizona is one of the top hotspots in the world for UFO sightings, and most recently, orbs. Many reports are orange balls of light, much like the orb seen at Site X. People now claim there's a dark psychic connection to these orbs. I have on one occasion felt extreme fear uh, around an orb, and it's a feeling I never want to experience again. Christine Dickey has taken some incredible photographs of orbs around Casa Grande, Arizona, near the ancient observatory of the Hohokam. And Christine is telling us she's felt a dark presence that's manifested itself as malevolent premonitions, followed by actual orb sighting. What kind of feelings do you get? Well, it's kind of a feeling of excitement. It's like a, just a knowing and you feel excited, like something's out there. This is a feeling that you get before you have a sighting? Right. On September 10th, there was a huge thunderstorm building all day, and I got the feeling, so I went out and I started taking photos, and on top of one thunderhead, I got a UFO. Christine photographed this orb during a thunderstorm near the Casa Grande ruins, and it is indeed an incredible photograph. I'm not sure what it is, but it is interesting that she sees these orbs near this sacred site. I had an orb that was about that size, a little bit bigger than a basketball. This orb came down from the neighbor's house, down the hill, through the trees, stopped three feet from me. Now this thing is rotating, it's going back and forth as if it's scanning me. And I reached out to touch it and I heard a voice as clear as day say, don't touch it or you'll die. We're here in Arizona talking to witnesses who have seen orbs and felt a dark presence. In one case, 
an orb flew right up to a witness and confronted her. And I reached out to touch it, and I heard a voice as clear as day say, don't touch it or you'll die. I jerked my hand back. The next thing I know, it's about 11.30 at night, and I'm laying over the back of the bed, and I rose up screaming bloody murder. I had no idea what, what just happened. And so I dismissed it as I must have laid down and fell asleep. And I had a really weird dream. Her story is similar to this testimony that Ted Phillips reported. Witnesses are being intimidated, threatened, and sometimes even attacked. Not all of the reports are like this, but it's a very disturbing trend that we're hearing. So I kept it to myself, and then my neighbor came down, and she said she was upset with her husband, and she said, he never believes anything I say, especially when I told him about the green ball of light. And I said, excuse me? And she said, yeah, just the same night, she was driving home from work, saw this green light come out of the clouds, down over our neighborhood, and disappear into the trees. This is an example of the dark presence we're hearing more and more of in conjunction with the orb sighting. Unfortunately, a photograph isn't enough evidence to investigate fully, but we have someone who has multiple orbs he's captured on videotape. I think I do have a relationship to these orbs. I've been sighting and witnessing them for so long. I'm Jeff Willis, and I'm connected to these orbs. Hey, Jeff. Hi, how you doing, Pat? How you doing, bud? It's been a long time. Jeff Willis is one of the most prolific UFO videographers in the Southwest. Now, he's videotaped dozens of incredible UFOs, including many orbs. In fact, one of his major sightings happened while I was standing right next to him, videotaping Jeff in action. I've been actually videotaping orbs and UFOs here in the Phoenix Valley since 1995, longer than anybody's been doing it. We've had the white ones during the day, the red ones at night, red lights, green lights, blue lights, you yeah. name it. Jeff is telling us that the reason that he captures so many orbs on tape here in Phoenix isn't by accident. He's a dedicated sky watcher that has struck gold many times. And he's also reporting these weird premonitions before he sees the orbs. I have had uh, like a strange feeling right before they show up where I thought, go outside right now. And I went outside and then a few minutes later something showed up. Like a psychic message, exactly. perhaps, that they're going to be there? Exactly. As a matter of fact, when I was on the mountain with you, when I shot the uh, four lights moving to the left. You got it, Pat? It was funny because I was standing right next to Pat, and something told me to turn on press record on the video camera. And I held my camera up, and right away they started moving. And I zoomed in, and I happened to get it on tape. Whoa, I'm getting a series of lights right there. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's moving. How big was the object? I would say they were probably, uh, you know, smaller than these jetliners that come in and out of Sky Harbor. And they just appeared to be, you know, big balls of light that just hovered in the sky very slowly. What do you think you're looking at? What do you think these objects are? I mean, really, to tell you the truth, I don't know. It seems that the orbs that Jeff Willis has taken are very similar to the ones that witnesses are seeing in Missouri and in Indiana. But is there a dark presence to them, or is it something more benevolent? How have your sightings been going lately? The activity is intensifying, and it is more dramatic, really. I mean, the objects seem to come a lot closer now and a lot lower. Well, this matches what Ted Phillips told us that the orbs have moved from high in the sky and are being seen just above the ground. So we need to have Jeff's footage analyzed by Jim Delatoso. So of the Jeff Willis videos that we're looking at, this one right here is most interesting to me because of the lights 
and the apparent structure. We have a program that we use that measures the relationship of the lights one to the other to a reference point on the ground. This has structure to it. It had edges. They're like other structured V-shaped objects that we have in the daytime and in the nighttime. Jim is telling us that Jeff Willis's orbs are in fact a V-shaped triangle craft of some kind. That matches Roger Lamberson's Indiana string of orbs. So there does appear to be some pattern developing regarding these orb sightings. The reflection versus light emitting filter test that we ran mm -hmm. said that this is not reflecting the sun, this is light emitting. That's a key thing to know about this particular object, that this is light emitting, not light reflecting. Even a bright or a dim light is going to have a, a, a flare around it. Jim reminded us that any kind of light source will have a blooming effect when it's videotaped. But these orbs don't seem to have that blooming. And that's curious. It means that the objects are generating their own light. And it doesn't seem to be like light sources we would see on a tape if it were a conventional aircraft. This object has the same pattern of lights coming on and going off as other videos that we've seen. And if we graphed it out and compared it to other orb sightings, the graphs will be similar, if not identical. So Jeff Willis's orb video is very similar to the footage that Ted Phillips provided to us. They both appear to be generating their own lights. And that sounds like a craft with intelligence behind it. And Jim shared a very interesting trend that he's seeing with the orbs over Arizona. This is a map that I know will be of interest to you, and it's of different sites in Arizona that are sacred sites. Some of them have petroglyphs on them, and clustered in and around them are places where people have either reported lots of orbs or have videotaped them. I would suggest going to some of these sites and taking someone with you that can interpret petroglyphs mm -hmm. and see if the petroglyphs have orbs in them and uh, match them up to some of the, the videos that have been shot recently or even sometime past of these orbs. We're here in Arizona investigating the orb phenomenon, and we just got a lead that maybe the orbs have been around a lot longer than we first believed. Look who's here, guys. Look who's Giorgio. meeting us. Giorgio. You got it. Giorgio Sukales is the publisher of Legendary Times Magazine. He's one of the foremost experts on sacred sites, archaeoastronomy, and the ancient astronaut theory. And he's come to Phoenix to assist in our investigation. We've been told that the orbs that we've been investigating somehow have a relationship to these mountains, these petroglyphs, and the people who lived here, the ancients who lived here thousands of years ago. It seems as if these orbs have clustered around these specific sacred sites. And the question is, what really went on a long, long time ago? Those petroglyphs not only exist here in the United States, but also in South America, in Europe, Africa, all over the place. And I've always been very intrigued at the uncanny similarity between all these different petroglyph sites. So, Georgia, what do you think came first, the, the orbs and the UFO activity or, or the ancient sites? Definitely the orb activity, because that is what Native American legends tell us that their whole civilization, if not the entire planet, was seeded by the gods, or as they call them, the Kachinas, the teachers from the sky, the all-knowing ones. The Kachinas are said to have taught the Native Americans everything. So it's interesting to hear that they saw things that they couldn't explain in the sky. 
but it is possible that meteors and the movement of the heavens played tricks on them, and they simply misinterpreted what they saw. And here we are, I mean, check out all these paintings, these petroglyphs right here on the wall. The, the spiral is an often seen motif in many of these rock walls. And some have suggested that it is basically uh, a representation of our spiral galaxy. We're told, oh, it's all coincidence. And I choose to disagree because someone, the Kachinas, told the Native Americans about the cosmology of our own solar system. What we have right here is two human beings and they're both pointing to the sky. And up here we have two orbs that are floating above them. And as is often reported, whenever these orbs showed up, the Kachinas, the teachers from the sky, also appeared. And they taught mankind in mathematics, in agriculture, in engineering, all these different things. Giorgio says that the ancient Native Americans saw orbs, or UFOs, and that they were craft visiting from another solar system. It's possible that their descendants are the same orbs that are being seen today. What Indian tribe is native to this area? The Hokum tribe, and the Hokum means the vanished ones, because just like the Anasazi, they mysteriously disappeared. And all we're left over with is walls like this one here. The challenge is to actually decipher what the ancients are trying to tell us. And we know that the Hohokam tribe who carved these ancient petroglyphs and built this ancient observatory at Casa Grande apparently disappeared from the face of the earth. Is it possible that the message in these depictions might point to their disappearance well, what's the relationship between these petroglyphs and the orbs that we've been talking about? Do I think that the orange orbs were anything spiritual in nature? No, I think it was flesh and blood extraterrestrials. And our ancestors misinterpreted those visits as divine in nature, even though it was not. We have so many people telling us so many different things about what they think these orbs are. And I think there are natural phenomena that are going on on the planet Earth. And I wouldn't be surprised that if in 50 years we have a scientific explanation for what these balls of light are. I think the reason that the quantity of orb sightings and videos are increasing is because people often have a video camera in their possession. People are seeing orbs. Maybe they protect this planet. And when we get out of line, they, they come and have a word with us and make sure that we, we stay on the right track. It seems that a level of psychic communication is happening here that involves dreams and premonitions that are so disturbing to us humans because we've lost the ability to rely on our senses. And maybe we need to listen to what these orbs are saying. If the Hohokam encounter the orbs, it doesn't bode well for our future. So, I mean, you have this relationship, not new, going on right today in the Ozarks with Ted Phillips sites. And the story of the little girl who was confronted by the orb right in her face, something is going on here. One thing is pretty clear. Orbs have been our past, and orbs will be our future. And if we keep looking up, maybe we'll see something. I think the dark presence is an omen that a quickening has begun. We've ignored these contact events for hundreds of years, and maybe now that the evidence is mounting, we finally see an acknowledgement that we are not alone. And we better pay attention to events that have long been documented or face a similar fate that the ancients made.